Well, good morning. We'll begin with our first hymn, Christ is Made a Sure Foundation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be, be his, his kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God and be King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ. Oh 
The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Today's first reading continues the story of the Israelites in Egypt, many years after the story of Joseph that we heard last week. The Egyptians had enslaved the Israelites, but were afraid of their increasing number, so they conspired to kill all the baby sons born to them. But one is saved, one who will lead them to freedom. He is named Moses. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built cities, Pithom and Ramses, for Pharaoh. But the more they oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was Shipra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him, but if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do so as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and became very strong. And became the midwives feared, and because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she said she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, if the Lord had not been on our side when enemies rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us. Then, then would, would the, the waters, waters have overwhelmed us and the, and the torrent, torrent gone, gone over us. us. Then would the raging waters have gone right over us. Blessed, Blessed be the, the Lord, Lord. He, he has, has not, not given, given us over, over to be prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. This snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help, help is in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. 
the maker, the maker of, of heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. Our second reading sets forth uh, the various essence of, Philip, of Paul's essential teachings in terms of a total response to God, expressed in worship and our sacrifice of ourselves to God's will. Each Christian has a, de has a definite part to play in the purpose of the church. A reading from the letter to the Christians in Rome. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conf conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds so that you may discern what, what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in preparation, in proportion of faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, 
And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel for today presents us with the most important question that Jesus can ask. Who do you say that I am? And the disciples all had different opinions, except for Peter. Peter, looking at Jesus, said, You are the Messiah the Son of the living God. And so we know the answer, but it is like an umbrella, because for each of us, the attributes that we call upon in times of need or trouble are attributes of Jesus that become personal to us. Attributes like the rock, the Son of the living God, the bread of heaven, light, way, you, Jesus, are the way, the truth, and the life. Rock, rabbi, king, these are all names for Jesus which resonate with us at different times in our daily lives. As we grow in our spiritual lives, we experience Jesus in different ways. There is not a right or a wrong, but there is a convergence of our needs with Jesus' special gift to us. A friend of mine was widowed almost a, year, a little over a year ago, and she readily admits that she made a terrible mistake in selling their house and moving to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where they had vacationed on many occasions. She went to the local church, and she met a few people in the town and in the church, but it was March and the church closed and the shops were closed and she found herself at home knowing no one and very lonely. So lonely in fact that even the word suicide came into her mind. But she shared with me that Jesus became for her a companion in the midst of her loneliness. Jesus as companion. Who do you say that I am? For her, Jesus was companion. And I have to confess, along with the TV and the many series and episodes that she watched, but she could still identify at a spiritual level with the one who she could now call friend. When I worked with the homeless many years ago, so many of them would tell me that the only hope they had was the hope of faith, their hope in Jesus Christ. So Jesus for them was hope and companion on the way. In the midst of instability, Jesus is often seen as the rock. In the midst of confusion, Jesus has been the way. Last week, I helped a family prepare for the burial of their mother. They were immersed in grief. Since last March, this March, they lost mother, father, and best friend. They were all elderly, and it was not COVID-19 related, but the grief was enormous no family to surround them, no closure, no party after the memorial or the burial, um, offering a chance to gather together as family and friends in thanksgiving for the life of these important people. There was only grief. The mother's daughter told me that what she found comforting at the time was realizing that Jesus wept. Jesus wept over the death of Lazarus. And so for her, Jesus was the weeper. 
Jesus the weeper, Jesus the mourner, Jesus the one who also grieved. In our present time, many look to Jesus as their peace, their strength, their shelter from this terrible storm. But the question still remains, who is Jesus for you? At different times and situations in life, Jesus comes to us in different ways. It is the same Jesus, but we relate to a particular set of his attributes. Yes, he is our Messiah, the one who saves, but at certain times, part of his nature speak most profoundly to where we are. Jesus is my strength, said a man who is active in AA. My higher power is God, but I need to tap into Jesus' strength as the strong arm who can spare me from my own weaknesses and temptations. Today, Jesus may be your king. Tomorrow, you may see Jesus as your redeemer. Next week, perhaps he is the hope you need to move through an impossible situation. Or maybe in the midst of darkness, Jesus comes to you as light. Who is Jesus for you? Not your grandmother's Jesus or your Sunday school or who your priest thinks Jesus is. And when you can name Jesus for yourself, you discover what message he has for you. Perhaps you see him as your good shepherd because you feel lost and seek assurance and guidance. Perhaps you are experiencing waves of guilt. And through this, you become aware of Jesus as the one who forgives. When you know who Jesus is for you and how he comes to you in the midst of your everyday life, you will become aware of how Jesus is molding you, forming you, and making you available to others. When I presided at the burial last Saturday, 11 members of the family gathered near the gravesite. The woman who had been comforted by Jesus the weeper was the person who was a source of compassion to the other mourners. It was out of her experience with the weeping Jesus that she was able to be with those who wept at that gravesite. When in our poverty, we have dis discovered Jesus as the grace giver, we can be a source of grace to others. When we can name who Jesus is for us, we discover that we are growing in unity with him. We are becoming one with him and we can minister to others out of enormous compassion and love because we have discovered ourselves rooted in Jesus' con Jesus's compassion and mercy. Share with one another who Jesus is for you at the dinner table. Call a friend. I know that God is working in you. And I know that God works through the church, the community of faith of which you are a part. And as you invite Jesus into your life day by day, you will continually discover who he is for you. And I can assure you, slowly, timely, you will be conformed to his life and you will grow as his follower. Your faith will deepen and out of answering the question, you will be a bearer of his presence to others. And as we encounter Christ and allow ourselves to become his word, the words we use to describe him will slowly become the gifts that we offer to others and which impact the communities and peoples with whom we live and move and have our being. Who is Jesus for you? I believe that this is the most important question that we can answer at any time, but especially in this time of enormous social and political change. 
our faith is being tested. And our Christian response is so critical in addressing the extraordinary challenges of our time. See yourself amongst Jesus' followers. Hear the question asked to you and find a way to live into the answer gracefully, fully. Embrace the question and discover a newness and refreshment in your own life. Who is Jesus for you? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join me now in reciting the Nicene Creed, which can be found on page seven in your bulletin. We believe in one believe God, in one God the Father, the Father, Almighty, the mighty, maker of heaven and earth. earth of all that is all seen and unseen. unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son the only of God, God. eternally begotten of the Father, Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, remembering especially Hank, Peter, Bob, Joe, Nina, Shirley, Mark, Ronaldo, Sue, Charles, Carolina, Pam, Kyle, MB, Carol, Marion, Clay, Kai, Frank, Tom, Liz, Mark, Michael, Kimberly, Tina, Sue and Alan, Carol, James, and those injured in the Beirut explosion. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, remembering especially those who have died as a result of the brokenness of our world and those who perished in the Beirut explosion, that your will for them may be fulfilled. For we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Bless, O oh Lord, physicians, nurses, first responders, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. We pray especially for Dr. Elizabeth Engelman, Eva Longmire, Susan Dietz Massingill, Dr. Dan Griffin, Karen Yu, Brenda Marshall, Dr. Rachel Simpson, and Dr. Jeff Kurowski. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless, O oh Lord, all schools, colleges, and universities, that they may be centers for the pursuit of wisdom, and grant that those who teach and those who learn may remain safe in this time of pandemic, and may find you to be the source of all truth. We pray especially for our college-bound students, especially Andrew Athanasian, Megan Day, Nikki Furman, William Longmire, Christopher O'Donnell, Carolyn Pizer, and Jordan Pizer, and Carter Shields. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. A prayer for California. O oh God, our refuge and strength, our help in times of trouble. Have mercy on the lands damaged by fires. Have mercy on the lands where weather has destroyed livelihoods. Prosper those who rebuild homes and strengthen those who rebuild hope so that entire communities may face the, fear, the future without fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. What we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, merciful God we, confess we confess that we have sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed. Word and deed. For what we have what done, we have, done, we have, done, we have, what we have left undone. undone. We have not we left you with our whole heart. heart. We, have we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Neighbors selves. We are, we are really sorry, sorry and we humbly, and we humbly repent, repent for the sake of your son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your and ways, in your ways Lord, with the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Peace, everybody. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. Hi, <laughs> there's some people. Okay, good. So today at four, we're having a tea, tea in quotes with me outside. So come on down. No need to sign up, just come over. And then uh, the last one is next Sunday at four. And we'll probably do some more in September after Labor Day. I'll let you know. Um, I've been working on the new video project about what we have all been doing this summer. So if you send over some pictures or videos of what you've been up to, I'm going to make a nice video of uh, so we can all check in with each other. I'm actually going to extend the deadline a bit, a couple weeks, um, so that, you know, people who've been traveling and stuff can get their stuff in. So it's not due tomorrow, but soon. Send, send in your pictures soon. It's like when we say to Frankie, it's, it's time for bed now. He says, soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, buddy. Soon is now. That's what I tell him. Now. <laughs> soon. <laughs> um, we started our new book, uh, which the info is in here. So far, so good. It's a really interesting book. And we had a good discussion. So this Thursday, we're going to be doing chapter two. And... The savory taste of invincible thinking is one that people never tire of. All right. I think that's all for the announcements. Uh, you can read the rest, but are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? In this sense, yes. 
I know there's one at least. Yep. One anniversary. <laughs> one anniversary yes. today. Yay! Happy anniversary today. Who? Polly. That's Polly. Polly and Gary. Gary. Oh. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking for our anniversary. They must have fallen out somewhere. Well, they were in here. Right after the, the piece. Right after, after the page. Top of the page. Top of the page. Oh, there they are. <laughs> I knew they were in here when I proofread it. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's me. So let's do the anniversary prayer together, everybody. Ready? May God bless you and bring you joy. May he deepen your love for each other. May he bless you and your family and friends and lead you to an ending happiness in heaven. May Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us all and keep us, keep us in His love, love forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yay. Anyone else? Any other takers? Okay. Oh, Chelsea Square. I might cry. Chelsea Square is where my seminary is. That's what this hymn is. Ooh. Oh, about right. The seminary. Sure. Anyway, it's still there, believe it or not. Okay, anyway, that's a story for another day. We'll continue on. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God. Amen.
be following pair A, which starts on page nine of the bulletin or on page 361 in the prayer book. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give him thanks and praise. And praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Should we turn this off now? <laughs> subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life from him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has to us, we are bold to say, our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
gifts of God for the people of God. Remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long to be in my soul. I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood. Come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <laughs>